2024 is coming to an end and this year has been crazy for AI. We've seen all sorts of new and open source tools such as large language models, image generation models and even open source video models. But by far, one of the most interesting tools to come out this year can be used to generate 3D models like these, which you can easily import into Blender, Unity, Unreal Engine 5 or any other 3D software and use them for animations, video games, VFX, 3D assets, NFTs or literally any other purpose. And the best part is that all of this is completely free and unlimited. With the help of this new tool released by Microsoft called Trellis, which you can download and run locally completely free with a few simple steps. And this is their GitHub page. As you can see over here, this model can generate all sorts of different 3D assets, everything from uh, airplane models to bots or guns and stuff like that. And if we scroll down a little bit, you can see that it can generate uh, models based on prompts. So as you can see over here, vintage copper rotary telephone with intricate detailing. And if we take a look at the final result, you can see that it's really detailed, like this stuff is really good, especially if you think about the very early 3D model generation AIs. And if we take a look at another model over here, you can see a model of a blocky orange and teal robot with articulated limbs. This looks really good. And if we scroll a little bit, we can also see that it generates models based on images so you have an input image like this which you can also generate using AI and it will spit out a very detailed and high quality model as you can see this looks actually really really good especially for such an early project and the most interesting part in my opinion is the fact that you can also edit certain aspects of the 3D model simply based on prompts so as you can see over here we have a battle mech with a humanoid shape and in this second section it asks it to remove the arms so battle mech with a humanoid shape but no arms. Over here it asks it to add weapons and you can see it adds very detailed and intricate weapons. And over here in the last section you can see that it asks the model to replace the legs and it looks really good. And over here we can see some other examples of how the prompt editing works. As you can see, it replaces the house over here, it adds a river, it also adds a bridge. And here are a couple of use cases. So in this video we can see that you can make a whole world, a whole scene by using this AI. So only using a couple of prompts you can make a scene which would take normally many many hours for a 3D artist to make which is quite awesome. Over here you can see how it works, so you can take a look at it if you're interested in finding out more details about the process behind it. So currently we can only download the image to 3D model because the other models haven't come out yet, but when they come I will try to make an update video and show you how to use these other models as well. And an important note is that in order to run this you need a NVIDIA GPU with at least 16 gigabytes of memory. So if you have a GPU which has less than that, let's say 12 gigabytes, it might not work. You can give it a try but I cannot guarantee that it will work. Here's a couple more examples of things you can create using this AI. And as you can see all of these models look really good and the cool thing is that when it comes to generating these models based on pictures, so image to 3D, you only need one single picture of the item you want to generate and it will also generate the other side as well. So as you can see over here we have a simple picture of a ship and the model was able to determine what the backside would look like and make it look really good. We can also see this with this cool robot model. As you can see the picture only shows one side of the robot but the AI was able to figure out what the backside would look like and generate it properly. So as you can see uh, the robot's back looks really cool. And now let's talk about how to download and run this locally. Now let's talk about installing Trellis locally. If you have a computer with Linux installed, you can go ahead and follow these instructions. But if you don't, and I'm gonna assume that most of you have Windows installed, then you will have to go ahead and copy these commands. Now go ahead and create a new folder. And in here, go ahead and type CMD. Now this will open a command prompt in this directory, all you have to do is go ahead and copy these commands 
and just go ahead and paste them in this command prompt. What this will do, it will install all the necessary files and models and programs for you to run Trellis locally on Windows. If you try to run these commands on Windows, it won't work. These are only for Linux. But if you paste these commands, then it will install everything automatically. You won't have to do anything. Just keep in mind that it will install about 7 gigabytes of data and this will take about 20 minutes to install so be patient even if it seems like the installation is getting stuck at some point just be patient it will work eventually so go ahead and paste these commands in here i'm not gonna do that because i have already installed it and it would automatically install the program again so i'm just gonna close this window now after everything has been installed you're gonna see something like this you have to copy this url and go ahead and paste it in whatever browser and this will open up the interface and this is a program as you can see the interface is very simple we can test it out with a couple of example images so let's select this image of a dwarf as you can see the model automatically removes the background over here you have a couple of additional settings but i recommend leaving everything by default and all you have to do is click generate now this will take a couple of seconds to generate the actual model, so be patient. And as you can see on a graphics card that has 16 gigabytes of VRAM, you can expect to generate a model in about 20 to 30 seconds. And if we take a look at this, you can see that the model looks really good, very detailed. Now if you want to extract the model and use it in Blender or Unity or Unreal Engine, all you have to do is scroll down over here. You can see this GLB extraction settings. Now you can leave this by default, but I recommend increasing the texture size all the way to the top to have better looking textures. If you are using these for a video game and you are worried about performance, then you can also leave this by default to get a 1024 texture resolution. And all you have to do is click on Extract GLB. And if you're wondering, GLB stands for GL Transmission Format Binary File, which is a simple 3D file format. Now, generating the GLB file took a little longer, but as you can see, this is the final result. It looks really good. And all you have to do is click on download GLB, give it a name, and just click save. Now, let's say that you want to do this with your own image. This is also really simple. Now, if you want to generate 3D models that are specific for your project, I recommend using a website such as Leonardo AI or literally any other image generation tool to generate an image of a 3D model which resembles the character or the objects that you want. So, an easier way to do this is by using their new feature called Flow State. So, just click over here. And over here, let's enter a prompt and just click Generate. And this will generate multiple images based on your prompt. I recommend specifying that you want a 3D render and also full body. And make sure that you specify on a black or blank color or a solid color background because this will make it easier to separate the character from the background. Now if we scroll a little bit, let's say that we like this image right over here. But let's say that we want some variations of it, all you have to do is click on more like this and Leonardo AI will automatically generate multiple images that are similar to the one you selected. So if we scroll a little bit, let's say that we like this image right over here, you just click on download and then moving back to Trellis, click over here on the upload image section and select the image that you have downloaded. As you can see, the model removed the background and just click generate. And this generation was a lot quicker. This is the model. As you can see, it looks really good. It really followed the input image. And let's also extract the GLB. And this is the result. It looks really good. It really looks like the input image. Let's try a different prompt. And let's say that we like this image, go ahead and download it. Moving back into Trellis, just upload the image and click generate. And this is the result. Next up, we're going to click on extract GLB. 
So as you can see, it's as simple as generating an image, uploading it, clicking a few buttons, and you have a really good looking 3D model. Lastly, let's try a different concept. So here we have a couple of images of a Russian tank. Let's say that we really like this one over here. Let's download it. Go back to Trellis. And just upload the image. Click on Generate. And in less than 15 seconds, we have generated the model. Now let's extract the GLB. And in less than two minutes later, we have a good looking 3D model of a tank, which we can use for video games or animations or literally anything. How cool is that? Now let's talk about how to generate a 3D character, export it and animate it using Mixamo and then import it into Blender to use for animations or video games. So the first thing you need to do is go back to Leonardo AI and type the prompt you want for your character. So as you can see, I typed a 3D render of a knight, empty hands, wearing leather gloves and leather boots, neutral lighting in a T-pose position. Make sure you mention that you want your character to be in a T-pose position because this will make it easier to animate. Black background, full body, hands lifted up to their side. This is to try to enforce this idea that we want to see the character's hands lifted up at its side in a normal T-pose position because for some reason the model struggles to generate an image that looks like that. So if we scroll down a little bit, let's say that we really like this image right over here. Let's download it, go back into Trellis, upload the image, click on generate, and this is the result. You can see that it looks pretty good. The fingers are a bit messed up, but this is just an example. You can try this with a few different prompts and get some better results. So let's just click on extract GBLP, and this is our 3D model. Let's just click on download, give it a name. And the next thing you want to do is go into Blender, delete the default cube, and go on File, Import, and over here you can see a GLTF 2.0, otherwise said GLB. Click on that. Go ahead and find the character that you have generated and click Import. And this is the character, as you can see it's pretty small, so let's press on S and make it a little bit bigger. If you press on G and Z, then you can lift it up a little bit. And this is our character. As you can see, it doesn't have a texture because it is not being rendered. But if you click over here, this is the texture. And yeah, it looks pretty good for a simple animation. So once you're at this stage, all you want to do is go ahead and click on file, export and make sure you export it as either uh, waveform obj or fbx. I'm gonna export it as an fbx. Give it a name. And save it wherever you can find it. Click export. And now we can go over to Mixamo and just click on upload character we're gonna select the fbx file that we have created and click open click on next and now we're gonna fit all of these points so the chain should be right around here the wrists are over here elbows the knees should be right around here and the groin over here and just click next and now this is taking a minute to rig the character and this is the rigged character if we press on next and we can now go ahead and select a couple of animations so let's say that we want to use this animation over here The hands are a bit messed up because the initial image 
as you can see over here it had its palms facing the camera which is not really the best case scenario ideally you would want to see them from the side so you can see the thumb facing the camera but this also works and as you can see Mixamo already has a large library of various animations let's take a look at this one okay so let's say we like this walking animation next thing we want to click on download you can leave all of these settings by default and just click on download and just go ahead and save it and now let's go back into blender leave the initial character over here because we are going to use it a little bit later as you're going to see click on import fbx and find the animation that you have downloaded let me just move it around a little bit and just click play over here and this is our walking animation as you can see this animation is pretty short but you can go ahead and loop it over and over again and as you can see the character doesn't have a texture but all you have to do is go ahead and select the previous character over here in the material section just go ahead and drag this all the way onto the animated character and now it has a texture so let's press play and take a look at the animation and this animation is pretty short we can go back to Mixamo and select a longer animation let's do a dancing animation and this one looks pretty interesting let's just click on download and now if we go back to blender and import again FPX and select the animation let me just move it real quick as you can see this animation looks a little bit better it's a bit longer and let's just go ahead and copy the material again and here we have a fully animated and rigged 3d model that we have generated using AI now obviously these over here are just a couple of examples, you can go ahead and generate way better looking 3D characters. And this is it, I hope you found this video helpful, please let me know what you think about this in the comments and if you have any suggestions for future videos I would be happy to read them.